Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. It's good to have so many of you here with us in the sanctuary this morning for worship. And it's great to have all the rest of you joining us through Facebook Live. And together, we are collectively the body of Christ gathered for worship this morning. And we say to God be the glory. Listen now. Hear this call to worship. The good shepherd invites us to green pastures. We are refreshed beside still waters. We've been given everything we have, and God offers us everything we need. When we walk through shadowed valleys, God is with us. When we, uh, we are comforted and reassured, God leads us to right paths, and our cups are full to overflowing. God welcomes us to the table where love is expressed. And we are invited to partake of the truth that God offers. We have received plenty in order that we might share with others, for we are called to be God's helpers. So let us worship the triune God together. Please bow with me now for prayer. Good shepherd, we meet you in your name, confident that we are known and loved by you. We draw together from near and far to worship you, O Lord, expecting to be empowered by fresh insights to live as your Easter people who are the sheep of your flock. We want to care for one another in life-giving ways, and we seek to reach out to those who don't know you or who disregard you or who are suspicious of you. Help us grow in love that is genuine in its outreach, in its care, and in its self-sacrifice. We embrace the wholeness that you offer, and we dare to risk acceptance of a healing role for ourselves and the faith community. Equip us, Lord, for service beyond this hour of shared worship. For we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 396, Brethren, We Have Met to Worship.
Good morning, sir. As always, I have a question or two for you, Elijah. Are you ready? So today we're talking about Jesus as a good shepherd. So what can you tell me about a shepherd? You know what they do? What they're responsible for? Sheep. So shepherds watch after the sheep. So how do they watch after them and care for them? What kind of things do sheep need? Say again. They need food, so they take them to good pastures where they can eat good grass. And do they get thirsty? Probably. So they need some water. And then... Um, you know, a sheep might look pretty tasty to a wolf, so they need that shepherd to look after them in another way. What would you think? Protect them. Um, and sometimes sheep might fall down the hill and get caught down in the rocks, and they need the shepherd to be willing to reach down with their shepherd's crook and pull them back out of that troubled spot. Sometimes they'd even put them on their shoulders and carry them back to the flock. The Bible talks about how if they lost one sheep, a shepherd would leave the rest of them and go in search of that one that was missing. So a good shepherd is kind of like a good parent, aren't they? They make sure you have a place to rest that's safe and food and water and protection, right? And some place to run and play. All right, well, it's nice to think that Jesus is that for us, right? He looks after us in all those ways. So let's say a prayer together. Thank you, God, for letting us be your sheep and for sending your son, Jesus, not only to be our savior, but to be the good shepherd who will lay down his life to protect the sheep, who knows each of us by name and calls us to follow him and to be with him so that we might be protected and fed and given fresh water and good places to be safe. Thank you for watching over us in all those special ways and help us to do similar for our friends and family and even for strangers too, to let them know about your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, sir. You did very well. Uh, a few announcements. You ride in in the morning and see the cargo box out in our parking lot. We are collecting food uh, throughout the pandemic and distributing it a couple of different ways, um, both to Helping Hand and to um, churches helping people over in um, CAP, churches assisting people in Conway. So as you're shopping, as you're able, if you'll add some extra items in that could be donated to the storage box, we'll see that it gets to needy folks in our community. Uh, continue to offer Tuesday evening virtual Vespers. It's at 7.30 p.m. Uh, if you want to see it happening live and then if you want to watch it at a later time, it's out there um, for your viewing pleasure. So thank you for your support of that. Remind you of our daily online devotion at d365.org and encourage you to feed your soul day to day with good music and a good reminder of God's love day to day. If you have prayer requests, if you'll make those known to Linda Berry either by phone or by email, we'll include them to our weekly send out to the prayer chain members and try to be sure we update our prayer list here for Sunday mornings. Uh, remind us again that even in extraordinary times like these, as we're being able to partially gather back and others are still feeling safer at home, that you are the church and I am the church, and wherever you are today, we collectively are the church together, even at a socially safe distance. Friends, let's affirm our faith as we share together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This morning as we prepare our hearts for sharing in our prayer time, uh, we have a prayer number 702, Christ be beside me, and we're going to share a couple of verses in preparation for our prayer. Christ be beside me, Christ be before me, Christ be behind me. Please remember the following joys and concerns in, in your prayers, not only today, but throughout the coming days. All who are infected and battling COVID-19, all who are awaiting their vaccinations, and the medical community that is bound to be weary with caring for so many extra sick people over the last year. Please remember Sandy and Alan Perry, uh, they're both recovering from their boat running aground on a sandbar. Sandy's uh, broken leg may require surgery. I haven't heard a final word on that. She does have some broken fingers as well. Uh, Alan is banged and bruised, but in, he's in a positive spirit. He suffered no broken bones. However, when they checked him out, they determined he has a hernia that may require some repair and that he's got some recurrent activity going on in his liver. So it's a bad situation, but it prompted him to get to his doctor and have this discovery made. So all things work together for good. Please remember Ron Plummer's 26-year-old uh, niece, Casey. She's in rehab and dealing with trauma and recovery. Pray for her and her family. Also, Missy Kaiser's son, George Rudin, is in hospital in North Carolina. Judy Leonard's brother, Martin Goff, is battling infection. Judy's nephew in England, Wayne Millington, is undergoing radiation and chemo treatments. Uh, my dad is uh, having another good week and able to get out and go to church, and it really builds his spirit up to be able to socialize and be active. Um, please remember Dorothy, Par Dorothy Parker. Kathy Harms has several debilitating health issues, and we just pray her continued healing and wellness. My friend Elaine Adams is seeking comfort and wellness. Uh, Jeff and Laureen Walsh and family, we pray for their health and wellness. Ariel Griffith is local 13-year-old who's uh, we're praying for her remission and healing from leukemia. You'll recall that she had COVID and it led to discoveries that she actually had an underlying issue, which was leukemia, and to the treatment of that. 
Please remember Jim Carter. We pray for, pray for his ongoing healing following his surgery a month and a half ago. Terry Baker's brother-in-law, Larry Talbot, is not undergoing cancer treatment, but is ju we're just praying for his comfort in the remaining time that he has. Charles McFadden, we're praying that his heart transplant and recovery will be successful. We pray for Jesse Wallace's complete healing and recovery from shingles. We lift up Darren Hofert and his stage four cancer is spreading. He's now having to have weekly treatments. Pray also for his wife, Alex, and his six-year-old son, Mason. Also, Robert Callender is having some uh, back spasms and trouble with a knee. We pray that he can get relief and some help from his doctors this week. Please pray for my cousin, Madeline Tillis. Uh, her traumatic brain injury recovery is extremely slow and um, it's very frustrating for her husband. So pray for the family. Pray for Frances Mahalik. She's uh, dealing with COPD and she's had a great deal of weakness. We thank you for your ongoing prayers for our congregation, for our health and well-being, and for our preschool staff, students, and parents. One of our teachers got sick over spring break. She is out on quarantine for 14 days, and we pray her full recovery. Now, if you will, bow with me for a few moments of silence, followed by prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give thanks that you sent your son, Jesus, the good shepherd, that he knows each one of us by name and that we are loved for everything that makes us who we are. Knowing this fills our hearts with thanksgiving and joy. Move among us in our congregation and community and lead us to care for one another as Jesus cares for each of us. Creator God, we remember all who are called to share in the shepherding of your people, particularly those in the world where they're under attack or threatened. We pray for our ruling and teaching elders who serve us here at Celebration Presbyterian Church and also serve the surrounding area. We pray that they continue with inventive ways to keep us all connected and reaching out to those in need around us. We thank you for all those in our church family who serve you in small and quiet ways, and for those who use their particular gifts in their work, their church life, and among their families. We pray for the ministry of teaching Elder Gavin Meek as he leads our New Harmony Presbytery through these transitional times. We also lift up ruling elder Julie Cox as she has now ended her service on Presbytery staff and awaits clarity and direction for God's continued call in her life. We lift up all the ruling and teaching elders who serve the leadership needs of our Presbytery with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. For all these people, we give thanks for their dedication and wisdom and ask you to give them strength so that each may bring you honor through their varied ministries of service. Mighty and merciful God, you've called each of us to be your people and claimed us for the service of Jesus Christ. We confess that we've not always lived up to our calling. We've been timid and frightened disciples, forgetful of your powerful presence and the strength of your Holy Spirit among us. O oh God, forgive our foolish and sinful ways as you have chosen us and claimed us in our baptisms. Strengthen us anew to choose Christ's way in this world. Give us your Holy Spirit that we may be provided with all the gifts of grace needed to fulfill our common calling through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. God of compassion, we pray for our troubled world, for the countries with areas of deepening conflict, for those who are having to flee for their lives and those who through frailty must remain in war zones. We pray for those who are struggling with drought or lack of clean drinking water and those who lack daily bread. 
We pray especially for the people of India struggling greatly to cope with the increasing demands of COVID due to lack of adequate health care and short supply of oxygen. May all charity and relief workers, peacemakers, medical and rescue staff know your love and protection as they are serving you there. Show us ways where we can help support urgent action where the needs are greatest around our world. Creator God, in a week where Earth Day was marked, we marvel that you placed the Earth in its perfect position amongst the planets and stars of the universe, that we're at the right distance to benefit from the sun, and that conditions are perfect for supporting our lives here. Help us not to take this for granted, O oh God. We're in awe of your creation and appreciate its purpose and beauty, using all of our senses to feel, see, hear, smell, and taste. As the world wakes up to the enormity of our task to act now to preserve your creative masterpiece, give us all a sense of urgency and willingness to play our part in the conservation, restoration, and preservation of the earth for the good of all humankind. Loving God, we pray for those who have lost their way, for those who are as yet unaware of your love for them, and for those influenced by the temptations of the world, choosing their own path <clears throat> rather than knowing and following your voice and direction. Lord, we recognize that too often we stray from the straight path of faith and wander into darkness. Help us and them to be led back into your sheepfold where there is life in all its fullness. God, we pray for those whose lives are burdened with poverty or uncertainty about the future beyond the pandemic. For those without homes and without much food, people who must use shelters and food banks. For the vulnerable among us and those with poor mental health, Strengthen those who offer compassionate care, the caregivers and counselors, for all who are looking after the welfare and well-being of others, and for all who seek out and befriend the needy. Gracious God, we pray for all who are sick, in pain, or facing death, and for those who are grieved by the loss of someone dear to them. In this time of prayer we bring to you, O God, anyone who is in need of healing and wholeness and peace. Lord, as we enter this new week, we rejoice that Jesus is the good shepherd who calls each one of us by name. And with that knowledge, whatever circumstances we are facing, enable us to carry out your ministry in our lives by reaching out to others in love and respect. Merciful God, accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, and hear us as we pray the prayer he taught his first disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Friends, as we come to the time of receiving tithes and offerings, we start by saying thank you for the level of generosity which you have shown throughout this pandemic by giving generously and helping keep your church well supported by the grace of God and your generosity and the goodness of the government who not only gave us payroll protection funds, but forgave them, which is why we Presbyterians say, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Thanks be to God. And now they've given us a second round of payroll support. And we say once more, thanks be to God for all good things. You may, if you're home, mail your checks or deliver them throughout the week to the church office, Monday through Thursday, 9 to 2, or go through your online banking and have them directed this way, or through our church website using the Donate Now or Recurring Payment feature on the website. In all things, we say thank you, thank you, thank you for your continued generosity in giving to God and in support of this ministry. Hear this invitation to the offering. Bring your life as an offering to God. Present to the Good Shepherd your firm commitment to care for others in the spirit of Christ. We ourselves are called to give leadership and comfort. The giving that God encourages includes our time, our talents, and our treasure. Amen. Let us sing God's praises with alleluias through the doxology.
dedication of our offerings. How can we express our thanks, O God, for the one who laid down his very life as a witness to your love for all people? We're aware that many have not experienced Christ's love. We see their need and we want to respond. Use what we offer to you to bring healing and peace to others. Draw us together as one flock in the care of your good shepherd, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson for today is found in the Gospel of John, the 10th chapter, verses 11 to 18. Let's prepare our hearts to hear and receive God's word with just a few moments of silence, followed by the prayer for illumination. Overwhelm us with your spirit, O God that the words we hear will speak to our hearts as your word made known to us most clearly in Jesus Christ the Lord. And may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Hear the word of God as it comes to us from the gospel of John, the 10th chapter verses 11 to 18. Jesus is speaking and he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who's not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is God's word for God's people, and it abides forever. And I say thanks be to God. The Christian church has traditionally observed this fourth Sunday of Easter as Good Shepherd Sunday. In all three cycles of the lectionary, A, B, and C, the text are accompanied by by an abundance of music and prayers and literature from which we draw images and stories that add to the richness of the worship experience as we think about Jesus as the Good Shepherd. The Gospel of John develops this theme moving from the Old Testament imagery, which there were many of, to this wonderful reassurance that we can find in Jesus, a truly Good Shepherd. Many of the Old Testament, Old Testament examples were considered to be bad shepherds. The Easter message is that Jesus returns to us and for us, and he will never let us go. And our assurance is based not on what we do, have done, will do, but on who Jesus is and what he has done for us in his role as the good shepherd. As reassuring as the pastoral image may be, talk of sheep and, and shepherds warrants a little bit of scrutiny. The, the point is, what do we as modern people really know much of this passage? Show of hands, did you grow up with sheep? Anybody? Did you get to play with sheep at the petting zoo? 
still not very many. So many, if not most of us, haven't really experienced sheep up close or shepherding either. When I traveled twice to Scotland, it was amazing to me there to encounter sheep just openly grazing across much of the landscape. I marveled at how shepherds, aided by their trusty border collies, guided their flocks and rounded them up, learning to give way, as the sign said, to sheep that were blocking the road as they slowly meandered to the other side was a necessity. They had the right of way. Sheep always had the right of way. Learning to heed the posted side that said simply, shut gate against sheep. In my American mind, I didn't understand it at first, but it simply meant keep the gate closed so that the sheep don't get into this garden and eat the flowers or into this public space. Yet it's not often for me to see sheep here in my travels around Horry County. So perhaps speaking of our congregation as a flock of sheep may hold very little significance or not much of a reference point for any of us. Maybe we romanticize the image of Jesus as a good shepherd due to our unfamiliarity with shepherding. We see him in a clean white robe with his staff. But in truth, we know from the birth story, right, that shepherds were anything but picturesque. They were really dirty. Their job was dangerous, risky, and menial. They were outcasts. They were outsiders. They didn't smell good. They didn't blend well with the townsfolk. Shepherds were mostly known to be unclean and rough around the edges from spending time in the fields rather than town among polite society. So when Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd, this would have most likely been an offensive reference to the religious leaders of his time and to the educated people of his day. That would not have been a kindness to say that you were a good shepherd. Jesus' claim had an edge to it. And maybe if we translated it today, it would hit us better to understand it by saying, I am the good migrant worker, which is an image we have some sense of. An even stronger offense was Jesus calling out those same religious leaders when he talked about false shepherds who were like hired hands who didn't really care for the sheep. And when the going got tough, they got up and got going. They ran at the first sign of danger. They would have understood those veiled references. Jesus' claim echoes the Old Testament prophets who regularly railed against religious leaders who had neglected to be faithful to God's calling and to the care of God's people. Jesus' image of shepherds reminds us that God is especially concerned about those who are at risk and those who are the most vulnerable. Sheep are easily wayward and lost without the constant protection and oversight and care of a shepherd. In addition to unpacking the image of shepherd, there's also that tricky issue of calling us sheep. Some of us Christ followers bristle at the idea of being called sheep because what little we know about them, we consider them to be fairly dumb and mindless. But in her sermon, The Voice of the Shepherd, Barbara Brown Taylor shares a story that she learned from an acquaintance who actually grew up on a sheep ranch in the West, and it dispelled the myth that sheep are dumb. Her sheep rancher friend explained to her that it was actually cattle ranchers that planted that seed that sheep were dumb because sheep don't behave like cows. See, cows are herded from the rear. You get behind them and you shout at them and you prod them and you send your cattle dog to nip their heels and they move forward. But that approach doesn't work with sheep. 
If you get behind them and make noises, they scatter or they try to fall in behind you. Cows need to be pushed. Sheep must be led. So sheep won't go anywhere that their trusted shepherd doesn't go first, showing them that it's okay to go where they're headed. Follow me in the way, Jesus says. And he goes before us to show us that it'll be safe. Sheep seem to consider their shepherds part of the family, and their relationship grows um, to be quite exclusive. They know the sound of their shepherd's voice. They know the name that they're called by, by their shepherd, and they respond to it. Outsiders might hear that conversation or yipping and yapping and not understand what's going on. I know that the dogs that work with them respond to certain whistles that they can hear at a great distance. And you could watch off on a hillside, they called their mountains hills, but you could see the dog running circles around the sheep to round them up and begin to move them back down into the valley, responding to the whistle that made sense to them because they too knew the shepherd and responded appropriately. See, the shepherd's voice is key in this relationship. Jesus says in verse 14, I know my own and they know me. So there's a deep connection of relationship. I was the same way as a kid. I knew my mom's voice and my father's voice and depending on the tone and the volume, I could also determine a sense of whether it was a good calling or a bad calling. In all cases, it was typically a call to come home. Some you moved quicker for, some more slowly. Not only that, but Jesus says, I know them and they know me, but he says, I give my very life for them. There's nothing I would hold back in care for the sheep. The good shepherd willingly becomes the sacrificial lamb, which Isaiah 53 points to when he says, like a sheep, that was before its shearers silent, he did not open his mouth. Yet Jesus makes it clear that he gives his life willingly. He says, I have the power. No one will take my life from me, but I have the power to lay it down of my own accord. So I'm in charge, no one else. This is the power of the Easter resurrection. This is the message that speaks to us day by day as Easter people of the ongoing hope. You know and I know that sometimes we go astray just like sheep. Sheep that are ill may follow the voice of a stranger. Sheep are also pr prone to wander off and often wind up in trouble. I was told by a shepherd that the reason they go and find those wandering lambs and break a leg is so that they can't wander off again. Seems brutal. But he says they carry them back on their shoulders and by the time that leg has healed, the little one has learned that wasn't a great idea. They don't wander off again. Perhaps we've found ourselves in similar straits. There's so many voices out there in the world today that are vying for your attention and mine. So many distractions that would seek to lure us away from the way of Jesus Christ. Well, the great news is that Jesus promises he will never let us go. With his voice, he will call us back and we belong to him forever. We are sheep of the good shepherd's fold for now and forever. Friends, this is a powerful word of reassurance to us in our times of struggle as Christ followers, as we work to be more and more faithful over a lifetime. In our choices each day, as we practice our faith by saying yes to some voices and no to others, we know that Jesus is here. He's going before us. He's calling us by name and he's leading us forth. He still seeks out the lost. He's still after those who are in need of being sought out and rescued. He's out for those who are often forgotten or overlooked in society. 
So let's remember that it was lowly shepherds on a hillside whose night was lit up with angels and music and the message that a Savior had been born. They were the first to get that message and to go and find the baby. Lowly shepherds, elevated by the fact that God sought them out first to see this wonderful discovery that would change the world and life as we know it. Yes, we know that later the Magi would come, the wise ones that came from a great distance, and the fact that they were outsiders, they were foreigners, they were Gentiles, they were our people. When Jesus says, I have sheep that are not of this fold, but I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice, this means there's room for all of us in this conversation and in this fold of sheep that Jesus is the good shepherd over. As with God's grace freely given to us, the relationship between sheep and the good shepherd is based solely on what the shepherd does rather than what we, the sheep, are doing. It's all about who the shepherd is rather than who we are. The sheep feel secure just to hear the voice of the shepherd nearby. Are you listening for the voice of the shepherd? Are you conversing with the shepherd day to day? Through that reassurance, we in turn may allow the good shepherd to, to speak through us to reach out to the lost and hurting sheep that we encounter around us and to be his spokespeople to invite them and to urge them, encourage them to come into the safety of his fold. Truly, the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not be in need. Thanks be to you, O God. Our closing hymn is number 187, Savior like a shepherd lead us. Thank you. 
Just a couple of reminders that uh, Tuesday evening virtual Vespers is at 7.30 on Facebook live stream. Worship next Sunday, May 2nd, will be a Holy Communion Sunday. So if you're worshiping from home, plan ahead to have bread and juice available to share in Holy Communion with us. And we'll be here at 11 a.m. both in person and through Facebook live stream. Now hear this charge. Look to Jesus, the Lamb of God, who is the Good Shepherd. Hear Him, follow Him, abide in Him today, tomorrow, and always. Now receive the benediction. Go forth into the world with compassion and justice in your hearts. Give voice to the silent and strength to the weak. Hear one another, see one another, care for one another, and love one another. It's all that easy, and it's all that hard. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the powerful presence of the Holy Spirit be with us all, both now and forevermore. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen.